Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Explain This. I'm with the star of the show, Robin Riddle. Robin, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I am wonderful. Today's topic, uh, I know, is a passion, and I'm looking forward to hearing you talk more about it because I don't know enough about this. And this is about, it's kind of within the functional fertility umbrella. Yes. And we're talking about improving egg quality. Yes. Tell us what that means. So... A lot of people have the misconception that women's eggs are what they are and that's all you can do about it. Mm. So if you're getting older or struggling with infertility and if they tell you that your egg quality is low, some people see that as like a death sentence, like there's Mm. nothing that we can do about this. That is actually not the case. Mm. Um, So women are born with all the eggs that we're ever going to have. So at birth you have about one to two million um, immature eggs called oocytes. Uh, these are going to gradually start declining. So by the time women hit puberty, there's about 300,000 eggs Mm. that are left. Um, Those eggs will continue to deplete over the next 30 to 40 years of life until they're completely gone. So obviously there's no way to know exactly when that's going to happen. Some women have um, premature ovarian failure where we run out of eggs really early. Some women are still into their 50s and pushing early 60s and having normal cycles. Um, So it's different for everybody. But most women start to see a slight decline in fertility in their late 30s. Okay. Meaning egg quality is not quite as good at that point and the number of eggs left is not quite as high at that point. Is this kind of like a root... um you know, in the functional fertility world, egg quality is like, you know, kind of foundational. It's huge. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Egg quality and sperm quality, because that's the two things combining to make a baby. So we need the best quality eggs that we can have. Okay. Um, And even young women can have low egg quality depending on lifestyle. So we'll get into that more. Okay. Um, So within the ovary, all oocytes are immature or primordial, and they have to go through a growth and maturation process before they could possibly be ovulated. So Every month, every cycle, multiple oocytes, up to 100, are recruited to start trying to mature every single month. But the majority of those are going to die off. Um, So every month, there's typically one mature follicle that kind of takes over. That one becomes the leader. That's the one that matures, and that's the one that's going to be the ovulated egg. Sometimes two. Um, Sometimes we can get twins in there, Um, but typically, you know, if there's a hundred recruited, this one guy takes over, that's the one that's ovulated, everything else goes away. And this is each cycle? Every single cycle. Okay, okay. But the, from recruitment to being the egg that's being ovulated, it's about a three month process. Okay. So you start recruiting, it goes over through a couple of months. So the egg being ovulated has been going through that maturation process for three to four months. Can I just say something? The human body is just amazing. <laughs> it is, I isn't mean, it? I mean, just hearing this is like, what? I know. Like, uh, the, we're all miracles. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> like, exactly. This is incredible. The more you know about fertility and yeah. birth, especially, the more amazing that it truly yeah. is. That is wild. Yes, yes. Um, so as the egg is going from that oocyte to mature egg, that's when we can really be influencing the quality of those eggs as they're going through that maturation process. Yeah. Um, so... Like I said, three to four months to impact egg quality. Lots of different things that we can do for this. Number one is dietary changes. Um, And this seems to be the hardest one for people to do because it's so easy to fall into bad habits of of eating. But focusing on eating an organic diet, so organic as much as possible. And I have a video on eating organic that tells you the things you can get away with being non-organic. So check that out. Um, But organic as much as possible, rich in nutrients, fats, and proteins. Um, So there are, you know, there's different takes on egg fertility diets. Some are going to tell you basically be vegan. Some are going to tell you really, really high fat diet. Um, Some are going to tell you really high protein. I kind of take a a midline stance. I think all of them are right in their own ways. Okay. And I kind of combine all those together. So we want lots of fruits and veggies, lots of good healthy fats in the diet, um, lots of good lean protein. Um, So when we're looking at fruits and veggies, we want to eat the rainbow. Lots of different colors of vegetables so that we're getting lots of different nutrients in from everything. Mm. Um, Complex carbohydrates are also good. So we want to avoid the refined simple carbs, avoid added sugars, but those good complex carbohydrates are great for energy. So things like brown rice, quinoa, sweet potatoes, those are going to be fantastic. Okay. But we want to stay away from the pastries and baked goods and all that kind of thing because all those are going to have a very negative impact on fertility. Okay. 
Um, so the process of oogenesis and ovulation is also uh, requires a lot of cellular energy. So we need those carbs to have good energy in our body, but we also need to focus on cellular energy. So supporting mitochondrial health is going to be super important. Um, mitochondria, if you don't know, they're the powerhouse of our yeah. cells. So that's what keeps the cells going. So we've got to support the mitochondria so everything else can function better. So this can be accomplished through a lot of different supplements. Uh, melatonin is top of my list for mitochondrial support. It's actually a fantastic antioxidant. Um, so if you can manage to take melatonin and not have crazy dreams and sleep good on it, it's a great one to be on. Um, CoQ10 is fantastic. I love CoQ10 for everything. Yep. Um, any kind of antioxidant, so like Reservatol, NAC, C, um, which is in acetylcysteine it's the precursor to glutathione or you can take glutathione um, l-arginine acetyl l-carnitine um, alpha lipoic acid magnesium magnesium is huge yeah. for cellular function um, everybody needs to be on magnesium everybody's deficient whether you're trying to get pregnant or not everybody needs magnesium um, omega-3 is super super important and sometimes i'll even use dhea so that actually can help to uh, improve egg quality and people who are deficient in DHEA. And are you th thinking, okay, we, we get on all of these or is this kind of pick and choose? Pick and choose. Okay. Um, I don't like to overwhelm patients with a super yeah. long list of supplements to yeah. take. So I generally pick the ones that I feel like are gonna accomplish as many tasks as possible. Yes. So usually two to four off of this list are gonna okay. be kind of baseline things. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of different supplements that you can get, like really good prenatals will have some of this already combined into it. So we're getting more bang for a buck with okay. that. Okay. Um, other lifestyle changes, avoiding plastics. Well, I think we've got a video on plastics and parabens and phthalates. Um, you got to stay away from all of that kind of stuff. So I won't get into the details of the parabens and phthalates. Go back and watch yeah. that video. It's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, we want to avoid toxic products within our home. Um, everything, everything in our environment is toxic at this point. If you like it, if it smells good, you probably shouldn't be using it. Uh, so cleaners, air fresheners, candles, um, lotions, perfumes, all the things. We need to be staying away from all of it. Okay. We need to be going like back to our roots, basic as possible, like making your own soap kind of thing. <laughs> Get away from all the bad stuff. Um, we want to avoid secondhand smoke um, and any kind of fumes. Okay. So like if you're working around the house, if you're you know painting or ceiling floors or anything like that, that there could be toxic fumes coming from it, avoid it or wear a respirator mask that has filters on it okay. so that you can't smell that. Um, obviously, if we're avoiding secondhand smoke, we also should not be smoking ourselves. Um, so no smoking. Uh, it limit or completely eliminate alcohol. Yeah. Uh, besides being, you know, fun to drink, it's not good for anything fertility related at all. Yep. Uh, we need to get to and maintain a healthy weight as much as possible. That's going to be of huge benefit moving into pregnancy as well. Mm. Um, studies have shown that if mom and or dad are obese prior to conception, lots of higher risks for baby. Okay. So that actually can genetically pass on to baby. So healthy weight is super important. Daily exercise. It doesn't have to be weightlifting every single day. Weightlifting two to three times a week can be plenty, um, but just moving. We have such sedentary lifestyles nowadays. Most people work a desk job. You're sitting down all day long. Worst thing that we can be doing. We yep. need at least 30 minutes of exercise every day if it's only getting out and taking your dog for a walk. Yep. Anything that we can do to be moving. Yep. And then there's some really cool helpful modalities that can be beneficial as well. Um, acupuncture. Now, let me tell you, I'm terrified of needles, but I have a friend that does acupuncture and I tried it a couple of times and it's not as bad as it seems. Like it's, it's really not. Now, is this just acupuncture in general or is there like a you know, a, a specific type of acupuncture? So when we're dealing with um, fertility, I like to send to someone who is specialized in fertility acupuncture. Okay. And there is a place here locally in Knoxville. I'm sure there's places other where other places too, but I want fertility specific acupuncture. Okay. They know how to do the certain spots that help to encourage blood flow to the uterus or help to encourage implantation, things like that. Okay. So, um, but yeah, acupuncture can be fantastic. Chiropractic care too. And typically not so much like the go in, crack and leave kind of chiropractic care, but there's some chiropractors that are more nervous system focused. Yeah. Nervous system is huge whenever we're looking at fertility as well. So finding someone like that, that really helps to balance out the nervous system, the yeah. fight or flight, all of that, super helpful. Yeah. Um, and red light therapy. 
I you, love, you love, I red, love light red light therapy. Let me tell you, I literally have a portable red light that goes like everywhere with me. <laughs> My kids think I'm crazy, uh, but it's fantastic. And so you can even do now first part of the cycle. So not when you're actively trying, not post ovulation, but first like beginning part of the cycle, the follicular phase, you can even do red light therapy on the stomach across the uterus. Mm -hmm. Okay. It can help to improve the health of the ovaries, blood flow to the uterus. Is that like a handheld thing? So I use loom box little plug in there for loom box. Yeah. Um, I love mine. So it's like that big, it's just a little portable guy and you can just, um, I mean, you can put it on anything. So sore neck, put it directly against that. But if you were trying to get pregnant, you could just turn something like that on and just put it right over top of the stomach. That is wild. Yeah. It's so really cool. cool. Yeah. Red light's great for anything. Yeah. Thyroid issues, put it on your thyroid. Is there back like pain, a, put it on your back. Out of curiosity, are you, is there like a amount of time you try to get under the red light each day or typically 20 just so nothing crazy 20 30 minutes yeah okay, nothing crazy. Yeah. cool yeah it's really cool well this is so fascinating to me and, and I'm, I'm i'm glad that you brought up this topic just because it's so foundational just of the quality of the egg quality yeah. of the sperm it's so important to functional fertility yeah. so, so thank you. takeaway is there is something you can do about it yes yes you can make we things can better feel feel in, a, in more control yeah yeah, cool. absolutely. You explained egg quality for the for <laughs> everyone here. Robin, thank you so much. Absolutely. Guys, thank you all for hanging out with us as always. Uh, links mentioned uh, in this episode today, we will link down below in the description so you can dive a bit deeper. Uh, but as always, we'll see you all next time. Don't go away.